This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Chapter 5. Unemployment. I'm glad your friend asked the question, for every working man realizes how important this matter of unemployment is to him. You know what your life is when you are out of work, and when you do have a job. How the fear of losing it hangs over you. You are also aware of what a danger the standing army of unemployed is to you when you are out on strike for better conditions. You know that strike breakers are enlisted from the unemployed, whom capitalism always keeps on hand to help break your strike. So how does capitalism keep the unemployed on hand, you ask? Simply by compelling you to work long hours and as hard as possible, so as to produce the greatest amount. All modern schemes of efficiency, the tailor and other systems of economy, and rationalization only serve to squeeze greater profits out of the worker. It is economy in the interests of the employer only. But as concerns you, the worker, this economy spells the greatest expenditure of your effort and energy, a fatal waste of your vitality. It pays the employer to use up and exploit your strength and ability at the highest tension. True, it ruins your health and breaks down your nervous system and makes you prey to illness and disease. There are even special proletarian diseases. Cripples you and brings you to an early grave. But what does your boss care? Are there not thousands of unemployed waiting for your job and ready to take it the moment you are disabled or dead? That is why it is to the profit of the capitalist to keep an army of unemployed ready at hand. It is part and parcel of the wage system and a necessary and inevitable characteristic of it. It is in the interest of the people that there should be no unemployed and that all should have the opportunity to work and earn their living, that all should help, each according to his ability and strength, to increase the wealth of the country so that each should be able to have a greater share of it. But capitalism is not interested in the welfare of the people. Capitalism, as I have shown before, is interested only in profits. By employing less people and working them long hours, larger profits can be made by giving work to more people at shorter hours. That is why it is to the interest of your employer for instance, to have 100 people work 10 hours daily rather than to employ 200 at 5 hours. He would need more room for 200 than for 100 persons, a larger factory, more tools and machinery, and so on. That is, he would require a greater investment of capital. The employment of a larger force at less hours would bring less profits. And that is why your boss will not run his factory or shop on such a plan. Which means that a system of profit making is not compatible with considerations of humanity and the well-being of the workers. On the contrary, the harder and more efficiently you work, and the longer hours you stay at it, the better for your employer and the greater his profits. You can therefore see that capitalism is not interested in, empl in employing all those who want and are able to work. On the contrary, a minimum of hands and a maximum of effort is the principle and the profit of the capitalist system. This is the whole secret of all the rationalization schemes and why you will find that thousands of people in every capitalist country willing and anxious to work yet unable to get employment. This army of unemployed is a constant threat to your standard of living. They are ready to take away your place at lower pay because necess necessity compels them. That is, of course, very advantageous to the boss. It is a whip in his hands constantly held over you so that you will slave hard for him and behave yourself. You can see for yourself how dangerous and degrading such a situation is for the worker, not to speak of the other evils of the system. Then why not do away with unemployment, you demand? Yes, it would be fine to do away with it, 
but it could be accomplished only by doing away with the capitalist system and its wage, wage slavery. As long as you have capitalism, or any other system of labor exploitation and profit making, you will have unemployment. Capitalism can't exist without it. It is inherent in the wage system. It is the fundamental condition of capitalist successful production. Why? Because the capitalist industrial system does not produce for the needs of the people. It produces for profit. Manufacturers do not produce commodities because the people want them, and as much of them as is required. They produce what they expect to sell, and sell at a profit. If we had a sensible system, we would produce the things which the people want, and in the quantity that they need. Suppose the inhabitants of a certain locality needed 1,000 pairs of shoes. And suppose we'd have 50 shoemakers for the job. Then in 20 hours of work, those shoemakers would produce the shoes our community needs. But the shoemaker today does not know and does not care how many pairs of shoes are needed. Thousands of people may need new shoes in your city, but they cannot afford to buy them. So what good is it to the manufacturer to know who needs shoes? What he wants to know is who can buy the shoes he makes, how many pairs he can sell at a profit. What happens? Well, he will manufacture about as many pairs of shoes as he thinks he will be able to sell. He will try his best to produce them as cheaply and sell them as dearly as he can so as to make a good profit. He will therefore employ as few workers as possible to manufacture the quantity of the shoes that he wants. And he will have them work as efficiently and as hard as he can compel them to. You can see that production for profit means longer hours and fewer persons employed than would be the case if production were for use. Capitalism is the system of production for profit, and that is why capitalism must always have unemployed. But look further into this system of production for, for profit, and you will see how its basic evil works a hundred other evils. Let us follow the shoe manufacturer of your city. He has no way of knowing, as I have already pointed out, who or will not be able to buy his shoes. He makes a rough guess. He estimates and he decides to manufacture, let us say, 50,000 pairs. He then puts the pairs on the market. That is, the wholesaler, the jobber, and the storekeeper put them up for sale. Suppose only 30,000 pairs were sold. 20,000 pairs remained on hand. Our manufacturer, unable to sell the balance in the city, will try to dispose of it in some other part of the country. But the shoe manufacturers there have also had the same experience. They also can't sell all they have produced. The supply of shoes is greater than the demand for them, they tell you. They have to cut down on production. That means the discharge of some of their employees, thus increasing the army of the unemployed. Overproduction, this is called. But in truth, it is not overproduction at all. It is underconsumption because there are many people who need new shoes, but they can't afford to buy them. The result? The warehouses are stocked with shoes the people want but cannot buy. Shops and factories close because of the oversupply. The same things happen in other industries. You are told there is a crisis and your wages must be reduced. Your wages are cut, you are put on part-time, or you lose your work altogether. Thousands of men and women are thrown out of employment in that matter. Their wages stop, and they cannot afford to buy food and other things that they need. Are those things not to be had? No, on the contrary. The warehouses and stores are filled with them. There's too much of them. There's overproduction. So the capitalist system of production for profit results in this crazy situation. 1. People have to starve, not because there is not enough food, but because there is too much of it. They have to do without the things they need because there is too much of those things on hand. 2. Because there is too much, manufacture is cut down, throwing thousands out of work. 
3. Being out of work and therefore not earning, those thousands lose their buying capacity. The grocer, the butcher, the tailor, all suffer as a result. That means increased unemployment all around. The crisis gets worse. Under capitalism, this happens in every industry. Such crises are inevitable in a system of production for profit. They come from time to time. They return periodically, always getting worse. They deprive thousands and hundreds of thousands of employment, causing poverty, distress, and untold misery. They result in bankruptcy and bank failures, which swallow up whatever little the worker have saved in times of prosperity. They cause want, need, and drive people to despair and crime, to suicide and insanity. Such are the results of production for profit. Such the fruits of a system of capitalism. That is not all. There is another result of this system even worse than all the others combined. That is war. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.